Royal Canin. Incredible in every detail. Welcome to Pure Dog Talk. I'm your host, Laura Reeves, and I am joined today by Leslie Jasef. And Olga's going to say her last name for me. Farich. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and we're talking about Sealyham Terriers. Olga is a breeder in Sweden. Yes. Right now in Sweden. Yes, in Sweden. And Leslie is a handler, an owner handler, very successful owner handler in a very low number breed and a very difficult terrier breed to work with. I also bred my first litter in 1976. Yes. Oh my goodness, of Celia? Yes. <laughs> oh wow. I was so a junior a... handler. Oh wow. And just and you started with Celiams? My mom had Airedales, bred and okay. showed Airedales, and okay. I always loved Celies. And the uh, nearby near was a woman who bred Airedales, Edna Dobbins, who also okay. bred miniature Schnauzers. And her kennel, she showed, well, first of all, she showed Sealy's for Surgeon Pride Kennels. I'm oh, a surgeon. all right. And then she, her kennel help was a young high school senior named Marjorie Good. Oh, and that's my how God, I met that, Marjorie. That is awesome. So we've known each other for a right? very long time. Right. And had, um, I had a bitch that I had gotten from Edna, and Marjorie had a niece, Okay. And then Patsy Wood had a sister to mine, and so we were all interconnected. In this little breeding mm -hmm. circle. Yeah. Wow. And so how did you meet Olga? About 12 years ago, yeah, 11 years so. ago, mm -hmm. uh, her now husband, Frederick Oz, was over here in the United States working for a breeder mm -hmm. of Airedales, and he had his Sealy Ham with him, Doris. Oh, and wow. I fell in love with Doris. She was a beautiful Sealy. And... Wow. Social media makes a much smaller world, and so we right. reconnected on Facebook probably eight years ago. Awesome. And I saw them at our AKC at Sealyham Terrier, the centennial show mm -hmm. that we had mm -hmm. for the club. Mm -hmm. And I asked them if they were going to be breeding any litters coming up because I'd liked what they were breeding. And right. they said, well, right. yes, we're going to be having our dream breeding. And it was a Doris son to a Doris daughter. Oh, my gosh. And I said, well, I'd be very interested. Let me know. Right. So about nine months later, that litter was born. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. And who did that make? <laughs> Just continue. <laughs> um, I, they it's told me that there one. were four girls and one boy. Yes. Born the day after my birthday, actually. Oh my gosh, so perfect. <laughs> it's perfect, yes. And so they sent lots of videos, and we talked about it, and I hadn't decided. I thought I had decided when I went over, mm -hmm. and went over, and this little girl puppy just claimed me. And so she turned out to be four-leg, top-secret, Xenia on a top. That was Xenia. James Bond litter. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. that was Xenia. So, yep. Very nice, and she's beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Jesus. And as, so you are the breeder of Xenia. Me and, yes, and your Frederick, yes, yes, it's mostly on, uh, it's Frederick's name that is a, the breeder. Yes, mm -hmm. and it was your dream litter because why? Well, um, Doris is uh, the first Celium that Frederick ever had. Mm -hmm. And I started just two years uh, before Frederick started uh, his adventure with Celiams. But I bred, uh, and I bred two litters under my own prefix in Poland okay. at that point. And I kept, uh, from one of the litters, from the second litter, I kept a male. It mm -hmm. was absolutely gorgeous. And actually, we, that's how we met with Frederick. Uh, he contacted me long before we were together. Oh uh, my gosh, so yet another dog <laughs> story. Exactly. <laughs> he just contacted me asking for Milo, for the boy, um, well, it didn't happen at that point, but right. it happened several years later when we when we were together with Frederick, and that was our first leader. Yes, our right. first leader together. Together, exactly. Okay. okay, and so that really is pretty special. Oh, very special. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Xenia is the the dog that you've done a lot of winning with here in the U.S. She's done very well. Yes, and an owner handler, top owner handler terrier. Yes. And so you are working with the toughest group <laughs> for competition and yeah. the toughest terrier breed to trim. That's what I keep hearing. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that was the breed I learned to groom on. Right. So for me, that so for it's, you, it's normal. Right. And it, their coats can be different, mm -hmm. but it, it's like any dog. Mm -hmm. 
you have a different texture or whatever, mm -hmm. it's learning mm -hmm. how to trim that dog and then trim that dog for its confirmation. For its confirmation, mm -hmm. right, right, right. And so you do very well also in regular groups. I mean, you're not just in the owner-handler group. No, no. And I mean, always, always say it's an East Coast Terrier competition, mm -hmm. which is some great dogs. Incredible. Some great handlers. Yep. And I'm always in awe when she's... You know, it, it's an honor to be placed in one of those, even pulled in one of those groups. Yeah, and you consistently place in them. Mm -hmm. And that, what, okay, so besides the fact that you started young, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I mean, you've been at this for a long time, what made it so that you could go into that group ring with those tough competitors and feel like, I got this. So talking to our listeners who want to learn how to be successful like you, who, who sometimes feel like owner handlers don't get a fair shake. Uh, this is a discussion that happens on social media all yes. the time. Yes, so and so I'm all, asking your input. You have to go into the ring with your dog trained and prepared like any other person in that ring. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who it is. It can be any handler that you emulate and watch mm -hmm. and observe how they handle the dog and how they comb and when they're grooming them and have them on the table and understand that they don't just do that right before they go in the ring. It's right. during the week, it's preparation, and it's trimming, and it's maintaining the trimming. Mm -hmm. It's just, you can't make an excuse if you're going to be an owner handler. You've got to go in and you've got to be prepared, and your dog has to be prepared. Absolutely. So that's, that's a two-way yeah. street. Yeah. And Olga, talk to us. Europe is, is much more relaxed. Would that be a fair... <laughs> In a way, yes, yeah. <laughs> because there is just not that many handlers, professional right. handlers. Right, and so you've watched shows here in the U.S., mm -hmm. you've been to the U.S., mm -hmm. so so tell our, give our listeners what is it that is better about European shows, and what is it that's better about American shows, in your Oof. opinion? That is a tough question, or probably, you know, for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, we we love the, I mean, me and Frederick both, mm. uh, we just love the, um, the, the the fact of the professionally groomed and handled dogs here, because the, I mean, the level, general level of grooming is just much higher here. Mm -hmm. It probably helps that you can use some products that we can use in Europe, <laughs> but in general, we were always focusing on how the dogs look here mm -hmm. uh, in in the US. Well, of course, I mean, if you compete like Leslie compete against all the big handlers, mm -hmm. uh, is it in a breed or in a group? Mm -hmm. It makes her it it's, it, it makes it tougher for her, mm -hmm. absolutely. So. Uh, in Europe, we have maybe famous and uh, very well-known big breeders, mm -hmm. uh, maybe breeders' judges, mm -hmm. but not as many professional handlers. So, so that is the relaxed part that you right. that you mentioned that makes it maybe a little bit easier for average person that mm -hmm. works hard mm -hmm. to actually yeah, be able to compete on a high level. Mm -hmm. But the quality of dogs in Europe is amazing, and particularly mm -hmm. in certain certain breeds, maybe mm -hmm. more than others. Oh, I yes. mean, the terrier breeds, some of the sighthound breeds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I understand that some of the sighthound breeds in Sweden are amazing. Mm -hmm. And and in the terriers are amazing mm -hmm. in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would think that the terrier group in Sweden is the toughest in... I would be as brave to say uh, toughest in Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. That is the that is the Swedish uh, terriers. But I mean, I'm not saying we have beautiful dogs in Europe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. but it's you know just this a little extra that is put right. in US. Yeah. Yes, a little extra. A little extra. <laughs> just a little. <laughs> A lot more shows. Well, <laughs> and that was exactly where I was going, Leslie. And so I think we could talk a little bit about that. And I've talked to a couple other people. I interviewed Jason Lynn mm -hmm. um, from the UK, and he talked about, you know, doing up a poodle without electricity at the show. Mm. Ah! Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. Um, and the fact that even in the UK, a small area, you have way fewer number of shows. Mm -hmm. So... Share a little bit about what that ambiance, what that, mm -hmm. what that, how it is at the dog show. Just generally the the atmosphere in Europe. Um, well, you know the number of shows. I can agree that of course in US there is there are much more much more shows. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, if you 
look at how how huge US is mm-hmm. and then compare to whole Europe right then probably it's not that different because um, I mean in, okay. in just in Poland small Poland you have uh, weekends and quite many weekends with mm. three or four shows every weekend so it's okay. you know okay uh, but uh, but yes there are and in general there are bigger shows than than here in the US bigger entries oh mm-hmm. yes why do you think yeah. that is I'm I'm serious. I ask this all my European people I talk to. I'm like, why do you guys have so many more people? But maybe it has something to do with uh, with the fact that it's a it's still a hobby for Mm -hmm. uh, average Mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Maybe it has Mm -hmm. something to do with that. But yes, I mean, there is um, a world show. There you Mm -hmm. will see over twenty thousand dogs. So you will never get an entry like that in the U.S. We're excited because um, the Orlando shows the um, AKC National Championship. Why it's got four thousand dogs. That's a huge mm-hmm. dog show here. And I was trying to explain to somebody the other day, I'm like, Okay, world dog show, twenty thousand mm-hmm. dogs. Crofts, how many? Forty thousand? I mean it's, no, it's twenty five. Uh, but it's still yeah. I mean insane. Huge. But uh, you know, Swedish winner show, for example, mm-hmm. that is like I think like six thousand dogs mm-hmm. and four thousand dogs is a is a big but quite normal international show, international level show in Europe. So it's not Interesting. anything like Wow, well, it's wow in a way, but of right, course, you know, right, right. in national small shows, it's thousand dogs. Okay, okay mm-hmm. so not too, too much difference. Mm-hmm. Just the fact that some of those shows mm-hmm. get such those a huge ones, entry. Absolutely. Right, mm-hmm. okay. All right, and so as you are breeding Sealy Hands, and this is still, are you guys still kind of considered a threatened, like numerically? Yes. Low? Okay, oh, yes. so as you're working, and I talk to a lot of people with these, I did Dandy Dinmonts and Sussex mm. and Otterhounds, I just did an amazing yeah. interview with the Otterhound people, talking about how do you work those pedigrees? How do you make those pedigrees work when, what, do you have any idea what your worldwide um, number of dogs is? Any idea? I don't know worldwide. I know I'm on the board of directors for Mm -hmm. the American Sealium Terrier Mm -hmm. Club, and I do know our numbers were up last year from the year before, hoping they'll be up again for 2017. And so up to... AKC doesn't post that anymore. They don't post the dogs. If you request it, just FYI, I just had an interview with Mark Dunn. If your national club requests it, they will give you the numbers. Okay. Okay. Yep. They will give you actual numerical I think they count. moved up five steps from where they were. And they okay. were down in the 120, mm-hmm. upper 120s. Mm-hmm. And so any mm-hmm. progress right. is great mm-hmm. for right. us. Right. Pedigrees is, and that's another thing that sent me looking to Olga and Frederick. Sure. Because I had always loved Doris, but the style that they breed is not that different from the style that you see here in the United States and what I had always right. liked. Right, right. So I was looking for something that was tightly bred, Mm -hmm. which Xenia is, but that I could bring here and breed to just about anything and find a complementary match for her. And so you're looking for a phenotype match rather than a genotype match. I had to at that point, Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll do that again. I mean, this she just had a litter four months, almost four months Mm -hmm. ago, and that was uh, a genotypic match since since I brought her over. People have sort of fallen in love with four leg sealies. <laughs> At least do one. <laughs> and, well, a couple others. Yes. And I was able it's to. One breed sitting her. in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure. <laughs> I was able to breed her to her nephew, who is owned by Marjorie mm-hmm. Good. Okay. And so we mm-hmm. had a really lovely uh, litter. Oh, yes. Really mm-hmm. lovely litter. Um, very strong in breed type and. Now, next time, she'll be bred to something that's actually frozen semen, and okay. it's, it'll be a phenotypical breeding. Interesting. So. Okay. And so, as you're building these pedigrees, ah! as you're you know creating this family of dogs that has that look that you like, what is it, what are the strengths, what are you hoping to really focus on and bring forward, maybe in your phenotype breeding that you're trying to work on? Very similar to what we actually got in this litter of puppies. Mm -hmm. What I see in the breed is whenever anybody's showing a dog where they're talking about their sealy, I'll say, take your standard and get out your ruler. Our standard hasn't changed since 1974. Okay. So we we like that part. Mm -hmm. Now, the style has, there are some variations of style, but it still should be pretty much consistent. Mm -hmm. Balance is the thing, of course, in any dog you want the balance. Get out your ruler and measure the dog and compare it to the standard and break it down point by point. 
and you need to know where your dog's strengths are mm -hmm. and what you need and then I look in a bigger picture since I've been doing this for a while is mm -hmm. where is where is the breed strong right and where does it need improvement so what would be your thought where is it strong and what it as a whole across the across the breed where is it strong and where does it need help I will say just from what I like instead of criticizing no, the breed. No, just, yeah. just across the board. I mean, there's um, always going to be strengths and weaknesses. I think all in all there are decent coats. I think mm -hmm. all in all movement is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think within the different styles you have good balance. Mm -hmm. Whether, even if the dog is a smaller or a lighter bone version mm -hmm. or a, a bigger one, there's mm -hmm. good balance in the breed. Mm -hmm. Where I think we need to pay attention as breeders is tail sets and length of head because I think we're getting heads that aren't don't measure or aren't quite long enough the furnishings do a great job sure <laughs> of sure. making it look nice but you need to think about the fact that they were bred to hunt badger right the, that strong jaw you've, you've got to have those strong yep. jaws and yep. a powerful neck but not too long mm -hmm. just that flows nicely um, that pretty neck and a shoulder that's so Patsy Wood always said there's no better looking dog in a group when it's done up than a Sealy. And I've had other people tell me that too. And I think there's something when you have a, a nice dog with a very nice style and good mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. and it's well presented. Right. It makes a very striking picture. Absolutely. But I think angulation, I think mm -hmm. we could also work on, mm -hmm. especially on the rear. And that goes mm -hmm. with the tail set. Mm -hmm. and Yeah, that whole package. Mm -hmm. And the butt. Oh. <laughs> Like and and so <laughs> having just you know read the Sealy standard again, yeah. and talking about that breadth across the crew, mm -hmm. right? And tell talk about what that does for the dog functionally as badger hunters. You mean going going to ground mm -hmm. with those little <laughs> hind legs? Absolutely. Yeah, they really have to have that power. And I will see mine in, in our backyard. We have wild critters, and so they do like to go and get moles. And we have red fox and all mm -hmm. of that as well. So we do have to watch them. But when they go to ground, all you have to do is see that front end go down. <laughs> and that little rear end has to be strong enough to be controlling the motion of the dog going back and forth underground. Because right. at that point, it's not the front feet anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that angulation So going forward, but also and, getting away. Yes. Absolutely. You've yes. got to get away from something that's coming yep. at you. Because when that head's underground, if mm -hmm. they see something, mm -hmm. they've got to be able to control their mm -hmm. forward and backward motion. I've seen Excellent. this on ours at home. But if you don't have that angulation and right. you don't have the strength of the mm -hmm. hindquarters mm -hmm. and the and way that it's breath. set, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Excellent. You mentioned something earlier, and this is good for our listeners, but it's also fascinating to me just personally. You were talking about the standard and the measurements. Mm -hmm. So lay those out because this is one of the more interesting standards I've read oh, about. Oh, you make me quote all the I know. Not, not quote them, but <laughs> I was trying to come up with them off the top of my head. I figured you had to be better at it than I was. Oh. <laughs> no? Okay. Can I pull but it up on my phone? <laughs> yeah, right? There are very specific. The standard yeah. is very specific. This should be this, and this should be this, and this should be this. This is what I think where people get a little misled about looking at a Sealy from ringside. They go, oh, it's an oblong dog. And by silhouette and profile, it is. Mm -hmm. However, when you read the standard, it is supposed to be 10 and a half inches, withers to ground, withers to set on. Set on a tail. a tail. Right. And so I always tell people, if you're looking at a photo, mm -hmm. or even if you're ringside, cover up mm -hmm. in front of the withers mm -hmm. and cover up behind the tail. Mm -hmm. And you should have a square dog mm -hmm. right. in body. What gives them the appearance of being longer is that length of head mm -hmm. and powerful and neck. And they carry, mm -hmm. a, a usually or should, a strong shelf behind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And so that nice mm -hmm. butt tushy mm -hmm. that we were yep. talking about Back to that behind, group that power, and the, and the absolutely. shelf. Okay. Excellent. So that would be one thing. The other thing we were talking about heads is I'm seeing in some photos now, it does not say this in our standard parallel planes, not like the Scotty standard. Mm -hmm. However, you don't want, you want to have a nice back skull. Okay. You want them to appear parallel. Okay. And again, going back to what they were bred to do. Right. And so are you seeing the, the planes diverge yeah. somehow? Um, I'm seeing more, more rounded, oh, rounded. A little more in the okay. down face, but a little more rounded, not as strong a back Behind. skull. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm picky about the No, but this is, 
this is part of what we're helping mm-hmm. people understand. Mm-hmm. There are details oh, about yes. breeds that matter mm-hmm. and what makes a Sealy Ham a Sealy Ham and not a Scotty mm-hmm. and not a Westie and not mm-hmm. a whatever, any of these short little powerful dogs, mm-hmm. those are those details that count. Oh, I'll oh, throw yes. one more thing in bone. Yes. Bone. Mm-hmm. Strong. Need to have those nice feet because they talk about the feet as being, you know, big mm-hmm. front feet are larger mm-hmm. than the hind yes. feet. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was interesting. For the digging. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. But nice bone. When you put your hands on them, you should feel... I, you can look at the base of a tail mm-hmm. and okay. see what kind of bone they have. Okay. Even if it's a natural tail, you should be able yes, to see that. Right, base. Mm-hmm. right, right. Mm-hmm. As it sets exactly. on. And clean mm-hmm. heads. Mm-hmm. And, and I do like to this, see... Mm-hmm. I like to be able from ringside to see if it's I to be able to tell if it's a male or a female. Oh, okay. I okay. I like and the standard does say bitches slightly less. Yes. And it doesn't differentiate. It just right. is across the right. board. Right. Bitches just slightly less. Just a little bit less, less of everything. Mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, balance okay. again, balance. Mm-hmm. Okay. Excellent. So you're excited about being here at Westminster Kennel Club? Oh, yes. <laughs> Have you been to Westminster oh, before? Yes, I've okay. been here two okay. years ago, and uh, okay. our Ricky was shown sire to Xenia, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, and Xenia was shown mm-hmm. then as well. Mm-hmm. So um, Ricky was best of breed, and that was absolutely fabulous. You know, ah. to see him on the in the big ring yeah. there, down there, yeah. you know, our baby. Yeah. So that was wonderful, and it was Jeff Dawson showing mm-hmm. him, mm-hmm. and uh, he was combed uh, with Sally Sweat here, and he yeah. had a fantastic terrain in US. So um, that was that was a special, and it was the the last show for him in US. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. No. That retire- <laughs> I know that retirement show is always yeah, a tough yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> he had also won the national specialty. Yes. yes so that did. was a nice he year. Yeah. Yeah, Good yes. year. Good year. Mm. And Xenia is entered. No, she she's just entered. Had, she is. She was entered. I was really hopeful. You're not going to show her. She's not here. She's at home. She just. I. There was having puppies, right, and I right, you right. pull the hair back, yeah, and I yeah. thought. Just not quite enough oh. hair for what would be expected oh. at this show. Right. Oh, that's disappointing. So for I you, have I high standards. I and you know that. what? Mm. Owner handlers, listen up. I yeah. have the opportunity to bring this really great, and she's not quite there. Hello, that is the difference. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Never, never bring your dog out unless you feel that you can win, and never use. Well. It was this, and it was this, and mm-hmm. they didn't like no that, excuses. and they didn't, no, no excuses. excuses. You have to always have your dog in there and have them competitive. I love it. I so, love it. But see, you don't. I had border terriers. Did you know that? No. As well as Sealy's or before Sealy's? After. It was oh. a fun breed that didn't take much cute. trimming. Yeah. And we had gotten our first border back in 1978 uh. from Marion Dupont Scott mm-hmm. and waited two years to get her. And um, she did very well. She was actually the first border bitch to win a best in show. Oh, wow. Okay. And then we bred her. Mm-hmm. And a few years later, we brought her daughter here. She was nine months old. And she won the breed from the classes. Wow. And she went on to be the second border bitch to win a best in show. Very impressive. And you were talking about large yes. shows. AKC Centennial the Show. Centennial, right. She was third in the group. Oh my goodness, for a border at that type of show. That's that impressive. Was, so that was my other... Yeah, your other devil. <laughs> yeah, I don't have them now. We it just People have the bloodline. It's still mm-hmm. around, and there's mm-hmm. frozen semen on mm-hmm. um, a dog that was sired by our male that we had. And turns out he's the son of, the, of our male is the top producing border terrier sire of all time. Very I nice. had no idea until I heard that from his ah, owner. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right? Who knows Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ladies, thank you very much. I've enjoyed thank our you. talk. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Best of luck. Thank you. All thank right. You. Royal Canaan. Incredible in every detail.